So today I'm going to be doing a review of the Lizzie B. Handmade Spooky Spiders Crochet Pattern. Um, fair warning, I've already made this pattern two, three times, and I like it. Um, what brought the pattern back to my mind is that the creator, Lizzie B. Handmade, actually does an Instagram contest. They've done it two years in a row now. This was my first entry. Basically, you just take the pattern and... Uh, make it your own. So this was my first entry from two years ago, and then this is this year's entry. This bad boy right here. This guy took me like over a week, all because of the brain, because I basically just crocheted a long tube. Um, but instead of doing it like a tube tube, what I decided to do was do um, a strip of like four half double crochets and then slip stitch the two edges together. So that way it would be easier for me to pin on and so on, but it made more work when it came to actually crocheting it. Um, but yes, I love this guy too. Uh, and now I have a friend who has commissioned me to use this yarn to make another spider. Sorry, my cat was being really noisy. Um, so I'm using this yarn right here to make another spider. This one's just going to be a basic spider and not any special design. Um, the pattern does call for a four point uh, yeah, 4.0 millimeter hook and a 3.5 millimeter hook, but I cannot find my 4.0, so I'm using a 4.5 and a 3.75 to try and, like, compensate for that. That's pretty much what I did with this guy, and it turned out fine, so I know it's going to be fine. Um, but I'm just going to do, like, a little review and go over my thoughts and process, and I will link both the, uh, creator's Instagram and their, um, Etsy as well as like the link for this pattern which if you like spiders again I highly recommend it it's only like five dollars and it's like a really good pattern it's not too complicated and I really like the technique that they use to make the legs I'm not going to go into detail about it because that's not what we're doing here we're just discussing overall like going over little progresses of making it and all that stuff because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give away other crochet artist secrets if you want to know the secret go buy the pattern so the first thing is a tip not really a review on the pattern um but you're gonna want to use if you don't have like a actual stitch marker i always prefer to use yarn because i think the little plastic stitch markers are like hard to use like i don't like using them with my hands so i always use a piece of yarn so here's a magic ring um basically you'll just slip it through the center of said ring before you tighten it and then you'll go ahead and tighten it and then you'll pull your your uh, yarn through like this before you start your second one. Um, and that's how you that's how you do the stitch marker that's a piece of yarn. Uh, it's really convenient in my opinion and then you just pull out the yarn at the end. So um, basically whenever I get to the first stitch again I'll just pull my yarn over like this and then I'll just keep doing that bringing it back and forth um and you can also count your rows easier using a stitch marker like this um you can just tell them apart easier because you know every time the yarn switches like how it's inside here you know that every time it has a bump like that that's one row so you know that's one row and then this is the second row um so that's my tip in general for using uh, yarn stitch markers. I just prefer them over the plastic ones. All right, so I just finished row 13. Um, per the pattern, I just finished row 13. So I'm gonna show you how to count using the yarn as a stitch marker, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then this one right here will make 13 because that's the bump. Um, and I know I'm on row 13 because uh, minus four rows here in the middle, each and every row is unique. Um, so based off of where I'm at that the pattern, I know I'm 13 rows in. Um, and basically this is just an easier way to count rows without having to like look very closely. Like sure, you could go one, two, three, and so on. 
um, but if you're using a color like black or maybe your lighting isn't the best, it would potentially be much harder to count stitches. That's why I prefer to use, well, one of the many reasons why I prefer to use scrap yarn. Um, and then whenever I'm done, I can just pull this bad boy out. Okay, so, um, it's like 3 a.m. so I'm really tired, but I made two spider bodies because this is the first one. And I feel like it doesn't properly represent the variegation of this yarn. Um, also, this is my how much of my yussie I've used. <laughs> anyway, this is the second body. Um, they turned out very different, but I think I prefer the second one overall. Um, this is a commission for a friend, so I'm going to show them both completed spiders and ask like if they would like both or if they have a specific one they prefer instead um but yeah this is how your spider body looks all that's left now are the eight legs and um the eyes also one thing i like about the pattern is um even though there's like eight legs they're not all the same there's a group of four then there's two groups of two that are the same uh, so even though I am making eight legs, it doesn't feel like I'm doing eight of the exact same thing, uh, because that can get a little repetitive, and I'm someone who doesn't really like constant repetitiveness. I like, uh, I like a little bit of unique stuff, like a little bit of a mix. So, um, that is one thing that I really like about it. Um, anyway, yeah, these are the two spider bods, spooter booties, so far. Um, and I will update as I do the legs and such, but, yeah. It kind of look like, um, like rattles, <laughs> if you hold them this way. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I will keep y'all updated when I get to the legs. So we are now on to what is, like, the hardest part of the pattern, and that is sewing on the legs. So I've got three out of eight sewn on. And here are my eyes. Um, this is a custom order, so that's the coloring choices. Um, here are my other legs. And there's three different sizes of legs. Uh, and because, because my client wanted like a mix of every single color and the uh, other spider body just had like completely green, I am making a second one, which will be available at my store if it doesn't sell at the metaphysical fair which hey october 28th in corbin kentucky at the gaia spirits gift shop i will be selling items there during their metaphysical fair as well as tarot card readings um but yeah this guy this is how his legs are looking i just want to get the other one done first before i finish up on the second one um but as you can see the spider itself is coming along really well I like overall how it's turning out, but again, the hardest part of this whole pattern is sewing on the legs, like pinning them on and sewing them on, because not only are you like dealing with the body itself when you're trying to sew them on, but you're also dealing with the other legs, which makes that a little bit difficult. So if anybody has any tips and tricks for that, that would be nice. But um, ultimately the pattern is really, really easy to follow and um, goes really in depth with everything like it's pretty easy to understand there's lots of images and everything else um, I'm still working on the spider but once again I'm loving the pattern so as you can see I have my um, yarn stitch marker in right here and whenever you're using one of these the uh, easiest way to just take it out is to uh, just pull um, I always recommend using like regular four yarn like worsted weight yarn because if you use anything textured or like fuzzy or anything too thick, you might leave uh, residues or like various strings and such in your work. Um, so I always recommend that. Uh, now I have not completed both spiders. I have all of the legs for my second spider and I did finish the first one. I like the way it turned out where I have like all the colors here. Um, 
And this is how much yarn I have left. So I still have like half a skein or more left after making two whole spiders. Uh, if that tells you roughly how much yarn you're going to need. But it is a very simple, nice pattern. Um, like I said, this is one that I personally really enjoy. Uh, so, I mean, I would rate this pattern like a 9.5 out of 10. Simply because, um, like, it's simple, it's cute, I adore it, but I do wish that there was, like, a little, a little more to it. Um, I don't really know how to explain it, like, a little more detail or something like that. But overall, I really like the pattern. Um, as you can tell, it makes really cute creatures, really cute spiders. Um, and yeah, overall, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I will upload a final clip here at the very end. I'll snip a little clip here of how my second spider turned out. Um, but overall, like I said, 9.5 out of 10. I love the pattern and I highly recommend it. So, they are finished. Um, I did sew this one on a little crooked at first. So I decided to just say screw it and like lean into it. So now he looks like he's tilting his head. And when he's standing, it kind of looks like he's waving. Um... I will be inserting like clips and pictures at the end of these two in their uh, their webs. Oh, hi Sherlock. Oh. He wanted to be in the video. All right. Um I am going to be posting and like adding on pictures and stuff and these guys will be on my Instagram and TikTok and everything else um so yeah and everything is lint rolled before it goes to their respective people um just FYI everything does get properly lint rolled and everything and not everything is made in the same area as the cats um I just have the film here because we don't have anywhere else to film currently um but yes, they're so cute. This one, this one really reminds me of um, the Pokemon. I think it's Arachnid. I don't really remember. It's been so long, but this one definitely reminds me of a Pokemon. <laughs>